welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरीकर्ति बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स we are focused on the avyayi bhava samasa the bahurihi samasa and the dvandva samasa currently we are studying of the avyayi bhava samasa this is an extremely important type of samasa in sanskrit its features can be explained in the form of a simple equation mentioned on this particular slide so if you have x and y both independent separate entities in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent they are interrelated the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and generate an output in the form of x y denoting one word form as well as one meaning as well as one accent or swara so the features of this xy are aika arthya aika arthya aika padya as well as aika swarya this is one unit now amongst the x and y namely the constituents it is x which acts as the head in x y this is the association of the constituents in the generated output x y and therefore x is marked in bold characters formally as well as semantically x x as the head now in this x y x is the first member of the samasa which is invariably with a few exceptions an avyaya now since this x is an avyaya we can see that x y which is an avyayi bhava samasa is also termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha this is how x governs the form of x y also semantically the meaning of x acts as the head of xy therefore when xy is related to any other word in the sentence it is only through this x that it is related and not through y these are the features of the avyayi bhava samasa in the ashtadhyayi the avyayi bhava samasa is stated in different places for example the samasa vidhayaka sutras are stated in 2.1 to be precise from 2.1.5 that is avyayi bhavah up to anya padarthe cha saudnyayam that is 2.1.21 this is a small section of the sutras prescribing the avyayi bhava samasa incidentally 2122 is tatpurusha stating or prescribing the tatpurusha samasa and we have studied all the sutras in this particular section in the first course on samasa 
in this particular series. Now in 5.4 we find the Samasanta Pratyaya Vidhayaka Sutras for the Avyayi Bhava Samasa it is 5.4.107 which is the beginning of the sutras prescribing the Samasanta Pratyaya in Avyayi Bhava Samasa up to 5.4.112 another very small section dealing with this particular type of sutras. And then we have Swaravidhayaka Sutra, namely 6 to 121, etc., which prescribe the accent on the Samasa. Right now we are focused on the Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras for Avyayi Bhava Samasa, and we have already studied a number of Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras, beginning with Avyayi Bhavaha and then. Avyayam Vibhakti Samipa Samruddhi Vridhyartha Bhavat Kaya Samprati Shapta Pradur Bhava Paschat Yatha Anupurbya Yoga Paddi Sadrishya Sampati Sakalyanta Vachaneshu and so on and so forth. In this lecture we shall study the Sutra 2115 which is Anur Yatsamaya. This sutra has got two padas, anur that is anuhu and yatsamaya. So anuhu is prathama ikavachana, one slash one, and the prathama vibhakti ensures that this is termed as upasarjana because of the sutra prathama nirdishtam samase upasarjanam, and then because of that the word anu is placed in the initial position of the samasa by the sutra. Upasarjanam Purvam. Now the second pada is Yat Samaya, which is dissolved as Yam Samaya, which means Yasya Samipe. Samaya is an indeclinable or avyaya, which indicates the meaning Samipa or proximity, and the Paninian grammar through different statements has stated that when this word Samaya is used, the associated word gets the dvitiya vibhakti. So samaya yam, yam samaya. So yam is in dvitiya. What it means is yasya samipe, whose proximity. And this proximity is the mark. Yasya samipe lakshanam. Yat samaya lakshanam. The words continued are of the word avyayam from 216, sahasupa from 214, samasaha from 213, avyayi bhavaha from 215, samarthapada vidhi from 211, vibhasha from 211, and lakshanena from 214. Having all these words put together, the overall meaning of the sutra is the following. An avyaya subanta anu is compounded with another semantically related subanta which is a mark and which also indicates proximity optionally and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava. I repeat an avyaya subanta avyayam subantam which is anu anuhu is compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta Samarthena subantena sah samasyate, which is a mark, lakshanena, and which also indicates proximity, yam samaya, that is yat samaya, optionally vibhasha, and the resultant samasa, samasaha, is called avyayi bhava, avyayi bhavaha. Now let us look at the example. So we have near the forest. This is the meaning to be intended, to be conveyed. And so we have the Laukika Vigraha, Vanam Anu. Actually it's Vanam Samaya. Now Anu is indicating the meaning Samaya, indicates. So now we have the Alaukika Vigraha, namely Anu plus Su and Vana plus Am. Since the word Anu is mentioned in Prathama Vibhakti in this particular Sutra, it occupies the initial position of the samasa 
So we have anu plus su occupying the first position and vana plus um as the second position. Now this vana is in proximity of something which is described and this vana also acts as the mark of something that is to be described. So let us study the process and then let us also analyze the meaning. So first we have anu plus su plus vana plus am. This is the alaukika vigraha. Now the samasa saudhnya takes place because of this sutra. Then the pratipadika saudhnya takes place because of krutta dhita samasascha. Then we apply the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho and delete su and am. So we have anu plus zero plus vana plus zero. So when we join them together, we get the form anu vana. Now this is the compound output generated by the application of this particular sutra. Now when we decide to use anubana in the sentence, we add the suffix su after it. Anubana is an avyayi bhava samasa, so it is termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha. And the su that is added after an avyaya is generally deleted by the sutra avyayadap supaha which we have also applied earlier. But now in this case, when we have anu vana as the avyayi bhava samasa and it ends in short a, uh, therefore we have another exception playing a role over here, which is na avyayi bhavad atomtva panchamyaha. And so this su is substituted by am and so we have anu vana plus am that is anu vanam. Now when we use this in the sentence, we say anubanam ashanir gataha. The lightning fell near the forest. So if the question is where did the lightning fall? And the mark that, an, that a speaker wishes to indicate is the forest. It is the forest which is the mark. Also, the lightning has fallen near the forest. So there is proximity between the lightning and the forest, the lightning falling and the forest. So when both these meanings are combined, we have the sentence anuvanam ashanir gataha. So vana acts as the lakshana and vana is also closer to the falling of ashani, the place where the ashani fell. To explain it further, we can say that the question is, where did the lightning fall? The answer is near the forest, vanam samaya. So forest is also the mark where the lightning failed, that is lakshana. So the word associated with samaya takes the second triplet or dvitiya vibhakti. This is what is stated by some of the traditional statements in the Paninian grammatical tradition. Although Panini never explicitly stated the Dvitiya Vibhakti associated with Samaya, the statement which says this is the following Samaya Nikasha Ha Yogepi. This is the statement which allows the Dvitiya Vibhakti to be added after the word whose meaning is associated with the meaning of the word Samaya and also Nikasha and also Ha. Now, if we say near the forest, that is vanam samaya, but we do not use the word anu, the compounding will not take place. If we use the word anu, also the mark is understood, but proximity is not indicated or denoted in the sentence, then even in that case, the compounding does not take place. For example, vruksham anu vidyotate vidyut. This is the sentence. What, the, what it means is, that the lightning shown where tree is. So this sentence indicates that Vruksha is the mark where the lightning shown. However, it doesn't indicate whether the tree and the place where the lightning shown are in proximity. 
So because it is not explicitly stated, even though the existence of other two conditions does not guarantee the application of this sutra and the compounding taking place. So the compound does not take place in the sutra, in the sentence, Braksham Anu Vidyutate Vidyutu. No compounding. Because the proximity is not indicated or understood. Since the semantic condition of this compound is proximity, compound was already stated for this condition by 216. And we have a semantic condition Samipa stated in 216. Avyayam vibhakti samipa. So samipa is already stated. So what is the purpose of this particular sutra? The purpose of this particular sutra or statement is to show that this is an anitya samasa stated by this particular sutra. So we have both types of forms in which one and the same meaning is conveyed, that is one thing. And also it is shown with reference to the same words that are part of the Samasa. So the Vigraha as well as Sangraha, the Samasa as well as Vyasa will contain the same constituents which are part of the Samasa. So the statement in this case of the tradition is the following. Avyayam vibhakti samipa ityeva siddhe punarvachanam vibhashartham. Vibhasha is option or anitya samasa. What it means is, even though this was already established by the sutra avyayam vibhakti samipa etc., the restatement ensures the option. After having studied anuryasya samaya, let us now study 2.116. Yasya Chaya Maha. This sutra has got three padas, namely Yasya, Cha, and Ayamaha. Yasya is 6 slash 1 Shashti, which means whose, Cha means and, and Ayamaha is 1 slash 1, which is what means the length or Dairgyam, as is explained in Sanskrit commentaries. Now the words continued are Avyayam from 216, Sahasupa from 214, Samasaha from 213, Avyayi Bhavaha from 215, Samarthav Padavidhihi from 211, Vibhasha from 2111, Lakshanena from 214 and importantly Anuhu from 2.115, Anuriyat Samaya. The word Anuhu is mentioned in Prathama so that it is termed Upasarjana because of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samase Upasarjanam and then it occupies the initial position of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa because of the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam. So now we have the example, the meaning of the sutra is the following. The sutra Yasya Chayamaha means the Avyaya Subanta Anu, which is the mark for the length of a particular entity, is compounded with another semantically related subanta whose length is in fact indicated by Anu and the resultant samasa is the Avyayi Bhava samasa. I repeat, Avyaya subanta Anu which indicates the mark in the form of the length of some entity is compounded with another semantically related subanta whose length is indicated by Anu and the resultant form is the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. 
Now the example of this is the following. Whose length is marked by the length of Ganga? So there is a city and somebody wants to measure the length of that city. How much is the spread of that particular city? And the nearby mark to measure this length is the stream of the river Ganga. So now Ganga becomes the mark or the Lakshana using which the Dairghya or Ayama of the city is to be measured. Now in this case we have the Laukika Vigraha Gangayaha Anu. Now we get the Alaukika Vigraha in the form of Anu plus Su plus Ganga plus Ngas. Now the word Anu although appears in the second position in the Laukika Vigraha, in the Alaukika Vigraha, it occupies the initial position mainly because Anu is mentioned in the Sutra with the help of the continued words in the Prathama Vibhakti. Therefore, it is termed as Upasarjana and then it is placed in the initial position of this Samasa on account of the Sutra Upasarjanam Purvam. The Upasarjana Saudhnya takes place because of the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. So we have Anu plus Su plus Ganga plus Nasa. This is the Alaukika Vigraha. And then because of this Sutra, the Samasa Saudhnya takes place. And then because of the Sutra Krita Dhita Samasascha, the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. And then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and deletes both the soups. So we have Anu plus zero plus Ganga plus zero and so we have Anu Ganga. When we join these two together we get Anu Ganga. Now Anu Ganga is an Avyayi Bhava Samasa and Avyayi Bhava Samasa is stated to be denoting the neuter gender. By the Sutra Avyayi Bhava Cha once again in 2.4 2.4.18. Now, since Anuganga denotes the neuter gender and it is a Pratipadika, we apply the sutra Rasvo Napumsake Pratipadika Sya and then we shorten the Pratipadika Anuganga at the end. And so we get the finally derived compound output Anuganga. When we use it in the sentence, we add the suffix su after it. So we have Anuganga plus su. Now because Anuganga is an Avyayi Bhava Samasa, so the su added after it is to be deleted because Anuganga is also termed an, an, as an Avyaya. All Avyayi Bhava Samasas are stated to be Avyayas. And so Avyaya Adapsupaha would apply and delete the Pratyaya su. But we have already studied the exception rule which says that if an Avyayi Bhava Samasa ends in short A, then the Su is not deleted but is rather substituted by the suffix Am. So we have Anuganga plus Am and then we do the Sandhi. Sandhi rules are applied and we get the form Anugangam. When we use it in the sentence, we say Anugangam Varanasi. Anugangam Varanasi. What it means is that Varanasi is as long as the Ganga. So the length of Varanasi is measured by the length of the river Ganga. Ganga Dairghena Varanasi Dairgyam Gamyate. That is how the commentators put it. This is how we can explain the Sutra Yasya Chayamaha. Now next, we continue studying the other sutras which prescribe the Avyayi Bhava Samasa and we try to understand the processing of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa with the remaining semantic conditions stated in the subsequent sutras. We will also try to understand how the process of the derivation of the Avyayi Bhava Samasa progresses in which stages. 
to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output behaves in the sentence. So far we have seen that the pratipadika output is shown in blue colors and the laukika vigraha is shown in the red colors in this lecture series. We continue to study the Avivhava Samasa Vidhayaka Sutras in the next lecture as well. So these are the texts referred to Ashtadhyayi Samarthanika from the Vyakarana Mahabhashya of Patanjali, Vakyapadiya of Bhartrahari, Kashikavrati of Jayaditya and Vamana, and Samasa Prakarana from the Vayakarana Siddhanta Kaumadi by Bhattoji Dikshita. Thank you very much.